Congratulations to NASA. NASA scored a gold medal on Mars. NASA is reviewing the results of a new experiment which uses Mars atmosphere to make oxygen. Terraforming Mars has been a goal of many scientists and enthusiasts like Elon Musk for quite some time. The uh, chief here is to make Mars seem possible, uh, make it seem as though it's something that we can do in our lifetime. Recently, NASA has made one of the biggest breakthroughs in this field by generating enough oxygen to keep a small dog alive for approximately 10 hours. Does this mean we'll be able to generate enough oxygen for humans? How long would that take? And when are we going to send enough people to Mars to colonize it? In this video, we will go over how they manage to produce oxygen out of thin Martian air and how Mars will be colonized. Why do we go to Mars? Why is Mars such an interesting place to explore? The 2030s that we will be on Mars. Mars has long been a target for humans dreaming of expanding beyond Earth. The idea of terraforming Mars has been the subject of much fascination and research. However, this is no walk in the park and comes with a fair share of challenges. Mars has an atmosphere, but it's not exactly what we would call breathable. In fact, it's mostly carbon dioxide and incredibly thin, with a pressure less than 1% of Earth's. A person couldn't survive there without a spacesuit because bodily liquids would start boiling due to the low pressure. You want to give life a chance. So you want to not only heat Mars, you want to find a way to block the ultraviolet light coming from the sun. Mars also has weaker gravity compared to Earth, only about 38% as strong, and it isn't known for sure if this would lead to health problems over extended periods in the long run. Also, unlike Earth, Mars doesn't have a strong magnetic field. This is a problem because it means the planet can't shield itself from solar radiation. All that comes with an average temperature there being around negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit, and the fact that most of the water on Mars has disappeared over millions of years. Any water that remains is usually in the form of ice, so finding enough liquid water for future Martian colonists could be a challenge. Combine that with toxic soil, no no natural food sources, low light levels, and the fact that we don't know if life exists on Mars, and we have quite a task on our hands. However, NASA and others are working diligently on solving these problems, and a recent breakthrough has many scientists predicting a bright future in this field. We'll be talking about this in greater detail later on. The project of colonizing Mars is a fascinating project, and I think it's a probably a, a worthwhile one for the medium-term future. There are many advantages to terraforming and colonizing a second planet, and some strategies might work. Mars is located on the outer edge of the habitable zone in our solar system. Significant amounts of ice exist below the surface and in the polar regions. If we can melt this ice, it could form an ocean, providing a vital resource. If we can increase its atmospheric pressure, liquid water will become sustainable. Despite not having nature as we know it, Mars contains many of the essential elements required for life, including sulfur, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and carbon in their raw states. These resources can be harnessed to support colonists. Mars' thin and carbon dioxide rich atmosphere can help create a greenhouse effect to raise temperatures. And to make harvesting energy easier, there's an abundance of space for solar panels. Make sure to stick around till the end of the video to learn about NASA's big achievement. Since the inception of the idea, many have been skeptical about colonization because of the difficult processes claiming that it's something we can do with our current technology. But recent progress has made this a reachable goal, which is why many are racing to be the first. SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk dropped hints about a 2029 crewed mission to Mars. Making this planet habitable has been a long-term goal of his. The long-term goal of SpaceX is to develop the technology necessary to establish a self-sustaining city on Mars. And while Elon has talked openly about his goals, there are two private companies that aim to beat both him and NASA in the race. Relativity Space and Impulse Space are two startup companies from California that teamed up to launch the first commercial mission to Mars by the end of 2024. This is a giant gap compared to SpaceX and NASA plans. The two companies plan on jumping the gap by using a reusable 3D printed rocket and special cruise vehicles and landers for the surface. 
surface. Relativity Space has raised over $1 billion in funding for this mission, and they are pioneering 3D metal printers. And when they reach the Red Planet, this is where Impulse Space's nimble payload delivery and specially designed surface vehicles come in. But sending a team to initiate processes and complete colonization are two different things. So regular trips and vacations to Mars could still be a few decades away. In a groundbreaking achievement, NASA has made a significant leap towards the long-term goal of establishing bases and potentially a second home for humans on Mars down the road. The main goal of their mission is to figure out how we can provide astronauts on Mars with breathable air and rocket fuel. In one step towards the goal, they have managed to produce enough oxygen on the Red Planet to sustain a small dog for 10 hours. Moxie was able to produce 6 grams of oxygen per hour during 7 experimental runs. You need a little more than that to breathe, but it's a start. This remarkable feat was made possible thanks to NASA's Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or simply put, MOXIE. MOXIE is a compact device, roughly the size of a microwave, weighing in at 40 pounds. It was placed on the Perseverance rover, which landed on Mars back in February 2021. Over the past couple of years, MOXIE has been working to extract oxygen from the thin Martian atmosphere and work out how we might utilize that. MOXIE utilizes an electrochemical process to do this. The Martian atmosphere is quite different from Earth's. It's composed mainly of carbon dioxide, 95%, with a bit of nitrogen, 3%, some argon, 1.6%, and only trace amounts of oxygen. MOXIE works by taking in the Martian air, mostly carbon dioxide, and then, using an electrochemical process, separates one oxygen atom from each carbon dioxide molecule. It's basically sorting through atoms to find the ones it needs. So, how much oxygen did MOXIE manage to produce during its time on Mars? Over the course of the mission, MOXIE so far has sorted out a total of 122 grams of oxygen. That might not sound like much when you think about Earth's oxygen-rich atmosphere, but in Martian terms, it's quite the achievement. To put it in perspective, 122 grams of oxygen is approximately what a small dog, like a dachshund, consumes in 10 hours. But efficiency matters on this mission as well. MOXIE isn't just about producing oxygen. It aims to do it as efficiently as possible. At its peak performance, this device managed to generate 12 grams of oxygen every hour. That is double the amount NASA had initially set at its goal. This incredible efficiency means that we now have a viable method to extract oxygen from Mars' atmosphere, potentially for future astronauts. See, which is on the surface of Mars with the Perseverance rover, and it's created oxygen for the first time out of Mars' thin atmosphere. NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy emphasized the significance of MOXIE's achievements saying that this proved it is feasible to extract oxygen from Mars' atmosphere, oxygen that will help supply breathable air and rocket propellant to future astronauts. This breakthrough isn't just about sending astronauts to Mars. It's a part of a broader plan where NASA wants to use resources on Mars to build a lasting station. This would pave the way for human exploration missions. How close are we to living on Mars? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell.